Today I want to talk about progression, the difference between subjective and objective progression. So when focusing on progression, it's important to distinguish the difference between subjective and objective progression. For example, objective progression would include things like I met my macros by hitting 150 grams of protein today, or I was able to lift five more pounds today on my leg press. Um, and these forms of progression are, are factual and measurable towards your ultimate goal. Subjective progression, though, is often underrated. And it's obviously, though, important as well as objective progression and obviously leads to overall success. An example of subjective progression may look like I'm sleeping better, I feel more energized and happy. Um, and a subjective progression on an exercise would include something like my form's improving or I feel you know, push-ups targeting my chest more, something like that. It's important to understand that both forms of progression are good and should be included in a long-term successful fitness program. In some scenarios, it's important to realize that subjective progression can actually lead to better quality of life, which kind of helps drive the objective progression and motivates consistency in reaching your goals. If only subjective progression is available in the short term, it's still okay. It's still progress and should be viewed as an achievement. So imagine that you're saying, I can't do any more because I have, you know, I have this pain in my leg. Well, that's subjective progression. There's no way for us to measure the pain, so it's a subjective progression or regression in this aspect. However, to say my leg feels better the next week, it doesn't take away from the fact that you may not have went up on your leg press. So if your leg press didn't gain any weight, you didn't increase any reps, nothing, but you don't feel pain anymore while doing leg press, that's subjective, but that form of progression is still important. In the same regard, we wanna see our weights go up, we wanna see our reps go up, we wanna see overall better progress in the mirror, but subjective progression, could still say, I look better, but my weight on the scale hasn't changed. In that case, it's also a good thing because it's still pushing you towards your overall goal. And oftentimes it's underrated. People think, oh, I don't see the weight on the scale changing or, oh, I didn't increase any, you know, I couldn't run faster. Or I couldn't lift more weights on my biceps. And they start beating themselves up and they don't take into account how important subjective progression is. I personally believe sometimes subjective progression is actually better than objective progression. The reason being, if you can imagine that you feel better, you think your workouts are getting better, you notice less pain, whatever it may be, your mind's more clear, you're more focused at work, you feel happier, those are the things that long-term are gonna keep you going towards your objective goals. So subjective progression kind of fuels your objective progression to keep you on that trajectory towards reaching your goal. So next time you think that you may not have done as well as you thought because you didn't objectively hit a goal, make sure to consider subjective progression as well and see if you are getting better based on how you think, feel, and respond to your workouts and your diet. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, make sure to subscribe, and I hope I taught you something different on subjective progression and its importance in overall fitness and health. See you on the next one.